Good morning, everybody. So today we're building a bait pin. This is half inch by half inch American made vinyl coated wire from Lee Fisher. I've already done the bottom. We're about to do the top and then you'll realize how we did the bottom. Um, right now I'm just securing the side of the pin to the bottom here. Just some finishing touches and I'm lining up my seam from the bottom of my pin is what's going to be to my top. This material half inch by half inch the American made stuff the Chinese stuff is no good it's thinner gauge and it's not as square as this American made stuff it is a lot more expensive though so right here I am following my seam from the bottom of the pin up to through, through the top and I'm just gonna crimp put a few stainless steel hog rings in place so it doesn't wiggle around on me and I'm following my vertical lines from the bottom of the pin up to the top here and making sure it's lined up because this material is square it you need to make sure you get all your holes lined up it's going to be really hard to do this right here the half inch by half inch material getting your hog ring pliers in there just smash them down it's going to give you some trouble my best way i found to do it is do it from diagonally across each mesh and then from here, I'm going from the bottom of the pin where I have my corners, which are 45. You'll see how I do my top. And I'm following the vertical seam from the bottom to the top. Go ahead, go around the whole pin, do it with all your corners. This will make more sense when you see my top piece. Getting this one. And it'll help you hog ring your top piece down to your pin. Measuring out the top here, must this pin's 24 inches across, 24 inches across the other way on the bottom, and the material is 24 inches tall, so it's pretty much just a square, um, except my corners are 45. That's just to help with some of the bait. You don't have to do it, I just like to. Um, when you cut the material, you're going to want to get all these little sharp nubs off and recut it. All right, so in the corners here to make your 45s, I just measure your I do five inches. You can do whatever you want. Put your two by four in there, and then follow your little squares across on the 45. So both sides of this corner is five inches from the corner. Put your knees on it. Get your handy dandy hammer here. Bend up on your material, and then whack her over. You're going to want to do this all the way around. This is a top piece I'm working on now. All four of your corners are going to do the same thing. Measure five inches over. Two by four hammer. That's it. That's it. Done. Top piece here. And see how my corners match up with the, uh, oh, with the pieces I bent there? It'll make more seals. There you go. You can see it better now. Now when you hog ring this, when you crimp it, or however you call it, you want to, uh, I'm measuring the lid here, you want to do your corners first. I'm not measuring the lid, I'm measuring for the opening I'm going to put in my lid, I'm just getting an idea. I want to be able to dump a 5 gallon bucket in there, no problem, and I want to be able to get a dip net in there, no problem. Um, this top is a little smaller than the last one you saw, but it's still going to work out just fine. I forget exactly what the measurements were for my lid. Again, with your hog rigging, do the corners first. Don't worry about your straight edges because we know our corners are going to be exact because we followed that vertical line of the material from the bottom of the pin all the way up here to the top. And we measured and 45 our corners. So we know that those are going to be square. And then once you do all your corners, you can go back and do this little flat stretches here. That one I'm playing with with my thumb right there. You can do that later after you do your corners. This opening, this lid on this pin is going to go all the way to the edge of the pin. So the one side where my lid's going to be, I'm not going to hog ring. This side right here, this is where my lid's going to be. It's going to go all the way to the edge of the pin. Normally I don't do this, but because I will be probably dumping my bait out of here, 
I don't want it to be caught on a lip or an edge. Just getting started. Always measure twice and cut once. It's really hard to patch this stuff. And it's really hard to cut through this stuff too. You will get sore hands doing this. And I'm not gonna cut this piece completely out. You'll see here in a minute, I'm actually gonna fold it back into my pin and hog ring it to the top. You'll see in a minute. Here we go, and then making sure it's good. I'm gonna cut the extra little burrs off the side here. Just so there's less chance of something snagging, whether you have a dip net in there or something, or your hand. Then she gets pushed in, back up to the top here. And this is gonna be difficult to hog ring to. As you'll see here in a minute, I got a flathead screwdriver in there. And had to, there it is, and had to pry the wire up to get it to where I could actually hog ring it. And again, the best way I found is if you can do it diagonally from one square to another square. You don't gotta get a lot of them on there. This is pretty heavy gauge material. Just a few to hold it there. And this is going to make the lid of my pin really, uh, or excuse me, the top of my pin a lot more secure, sturdy, stronger, reinforce it. And then I do bottom paint all my pins. And now I'm measuring the actual lid part for the cutout of my pin. I forget exactly what the measurement was. Um, it's going to have a two inch overhang all the way around. And then on the front side of my lid, not where it's jointed, where it's hinging, I mean, on the front side, it's going to actually have, I think it's another two inch overhang that's bent on a 90. And you'll see me make that here. Again, just clean the wire up. Get those nasty pokies off. All right, here I'm seeing how much of an overhang I'm going to have. I think I went with two inches, which is four squares. So now you're going to do the same thing you did with the lid. Put your two by four there. Count four squares up. Get your hammer. Bend your material up. Give a little tap along the edge there. That'll get you a nice 90. This will keep all your crabs and pinfish from getting out of your, where your lid meets the uh, side of your pin. There we go. Look at that. They're not going to squeeze through there. And that's where we're going to attach our bungee to as well. Again, want to make sure it's nice and square because your material is square. If it's not, it's because you did something wrong constructing your pen. Make sure I got my little overhang and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the back of this material off. It's making my lid piece here. Right. There's the lid. And then I don't use hog rings to connect my lid to my pin. With this smaller material, it's just a pain in the butt to get it in there. I find zip ties work great. Got plenty of room to get the material the zip ties through your holes. And I don't smash the zip ties down tight. I just get them snug. All they're really doing is just holding the lid in place. They're not you're not trying to hold the lid tightly down to your pin. And I do a bunch of them, they're cheap. After I get my corner pieces started, just to make sure it doesn't wiggle or something silly doesn't happen when I'm zip tying them down. It's 
just checking everything here. I do cut all my taggings off. I've had people tell me that they'll cut themselves on them. I've never had that happen, and I've been around a lot of them. I do only use my zip ties for the lid hinges, though. After this, we're going to install the trap tag here. Or, excuse me, the hook. See, it won't fit. We have to cut it down to make it fit in the smaller material. I'll show you a picture of it later as to what it looks like. And here's our bungee. We just hog ring it to one side, go through your trap hook there, and then run your bungee through the other side of your lid there. And again, hog ring it down. I put two hog rings on each side of my bungee just so something silly doesn't happen and doesn't come loose. Um, snug it up where you think you want it and then try it out on your pin there. I'm pretty happy with that. I crimp them first, then I cut the extra off. And uh, we're getting towards the end here. I mean, I want to put a nice rope handle on the back side of the pin instead of trying to grab the whole pin. We'll probably put more than one handle on. We're looking pretty good. When you're dumping your pin out, you can use your trap hook to hook to the back side, like you see right there, so the lid doesn't flop down and get in your way. Here we are, we're burning our rope handle just so the ends don't fray out on us. You don't have to do this, I just think it makes it look a little nicer. Real simple, just put your rope in through a hole where you want your handle to start. And we're just doing two granny knots, nothing crazy, nothing fancy here. One, two, I call that a granny knot. That'll make a big enough knot there to where it won't come through the wire. String your rope through where you want your other side of the handle to be, and again, do your granny knot. And voila, you have a handle. Later on, I'll probably put one near the bottom. I still have to bottom paint this whole pin. Nobody intends to leave the trap in the water for over a week, but it always works out that way. You forget it, or worse, your friend borrows it. We've all been there. All right, before we go, this is a helpful tip here. These two pliers were exactly the same to start off with, but I ground down the outside off on this pair, and now this will fit into the corners and anywhere you uh, double layer that half inch by half inch stuff. Now, because it's not as wide, it'll fit into those smaller, tighter spots opposed to the regular pliers that you haven't ground down because they're so much wider. All right, if y'all have any questions or comments, let me hear them. Have a great day.